You might have been taught it's impossible, that you have to give up your values for your desires. I struggled with this for years until I figured out these rules that people who are successful and kind use. But first, let's clear up one of the most common misconceptions about what being kind actually means. Because if you're like me, you grew up being taught to do what other people told you to do. And the more you follow the rules, the better of a person you were. But the problem is that that creates the idea that being a good person is the same thing as pleasing others. That isn't that bad when you're working a typical job because you are supposed to do what you're told. But when you're building a business, it sets you up for some potentially traumatic experiences. This is why I used to dread handling customer support. Occasionally, customers would email in and ask to be let out of their payment plan just because they didn't feel like paying anymore. But people like that will make you feel like you're in the wrong. If you really cared, you wouldn't make me pay. That one scarred me for years. I'd wonder, am I really a bad person for holding people to their financial commitments? But it didn't stop there either. Because you know how you can get in your head about selling? Maybe I'm not being of service or my product isn't as good as I think it is. That made me not want to sell. And honestly, it made me feel kind of jaded about people, which went against the reason I'd started my business in the first place. I'm curious why you started your business or want to start your business. I'd love to hear. To be honest, I started my first online business advertising consulting because I wanted more control and freedom than a nine to five could give me. But I also really cared that I was actually helping my clients. And when I started this business, I cared even more. I genuinely wanted to help people who were in the same place I used to be, knowing you are capable of so much more, but stuck. But you know when it feels like someone, like a friend or maybe someone you're dating, doesn't treat you the same way you treat them. I feel like when that happens, it's normal to start feeling jaded and unappreciated. By the way, I've never heard anyone else talk about this, but I think it's really important because if you're a good person, which you probably are, and you care about the work you're doing and the people you're helping, you have to learn to balance your desire to help others and be kind with boundaries that basically protect your heart. But because nobody talks about this, I didn't know this back then. So I thought my only option was to remove myself from the process. For a few years, I stopped coaching and only sold courses. I felt like I couldn't and didn't want to deal with clients who didn't treat me the same way I treated them. Plus, I didn't know who I could trust. If you're feeling the same way, don't worry. There is a happy solution and we're gonna talk about that in just a bit. But first, let's talk through what happened when I overcorrected to make sure you don't go through something like this. Not only did I stop coaching, but I also stopped handling customer support and interacting with my audience. Not to sound corny, but I really didn't wanna put my heart out there and be hurt or be made to feel like a bad person, even though logically I knew I was in integrity and being of service. But as you probably know, just because you know something logically doesn't mean you truly and subconsciously believe it. I thought that as long as I focused on creating and being the CEO of my business, I wouldn't have to deal with the human elements that can sometimes be so hurtful and confusing. If you've ever felt this way, like focusing on your systems and your website instead of dealing with people, I see you, I hear you, but, and I am speaking from a place of love, that is not how you build a successful and fulfilling business. So here's what I would tell myself if I could go back in time. Loving and valuing yourself, even if it means not pleasing others, is not mutually exclusive to being a good and kind person. In fact, you kind of need to love and value yourself first to have the fuel to be a good and kind person. And there are three super important questions you can ask yourself so that you're staying true to you and your values while enforcing healthy boundaries and growing your business. 
The first question provides the foundation for everything else, including your peace of mind. And that is, are you delivering on what you promised? Doing this is the only way I've found to sell in complete confidence. Sometimes that means you've got to tone down your promises. Like when potential private coaching clients ask me, can you help me get to seven figures? Maybe, because all I can say in integrity is, I know what it takes and I've helped many people do it. So maybe I can help you, but I also don't know your ability and your work ethic yet, so I'm not going to overpromise. If you need a guarantee to hire a coach, I'm not the coach for you. Other times, that might mean working to build your confidence in your product. I'm not saying you need to do this, and in fact, you definitely don't, but I spent four years building my first flagship product, Employee to Entrepreneur. That's how long it took for me to learn how to teach and to get the course to a point where I thought it was the best it could be. Call me old fashioned, but I believe all we have is our integrity. So you gotta make your peace with that first. But once you do, you've got an unshakable foundation to establish your boundaries and feel good about it. High five to that. The next question I always go back to is, can I do this and still have my conscience be clear? For example, let's say you put your heart and soul into crafting your first coaching package. You know how valuable it is and you know you are in complete integrity selling it. Then you also know you deserve to be paid by your client because you both agreed to the price and you delivered on what you promised. As long as that's true, you are in full integrity holding a client to their agreement to pay you. Now, sometimes there are extenuating circumstances, like if that person loses their job all of a sudden. It's rare, but it does happen. And in that case, you gotta do what feels right to you. Depending on the situation, I've, for example, given people a few months grace before resuming their payment plan if they bought a course from me. Other times, I've terminated the coaching relationship so they didn't have to pay me more but I also didn't coach them more or refund them for the coaching they'd already gotten. Just a few examples, because again, I feel like people don't talk about this enough, but ultimately let your conscience guide you. Different people will have slightly different beliefs, but there's no more important role than that. As long as you're doing that, you know you're being true to yourself. And if that doesn't please someone else, like a client who isn't in integrity, that's a reflection on them not you. Which brings us to the last question. I really struggled with this one because if you're like me, you were taught that you are supposed to be of service and put everyone else before yourself. In fact, I remember once in the early stages of building this business, my dad asked me if I wanted to go back to China and see my grandparents, but the business was just starting to build momentum. And I was afraid if I went back to see my grandparents where there's a huge time difference and the internet isn't so great, I would lose it. I was also afraid it'd be tough to get it back. So I told my dad that, and he said, I see the kind of person you are now. The implication was that I was being selfish by prioritizing my own dreams instead of others, like my grandparents' desire to see me. It's tough because I do get my dad's point of view too. And in most cases, I would have prioritized going to see my grandparents because Family always comes first, but I knew that was a potential make or break moment that had the possibility of changing not just the trajectory of my life, but my family's. So I checked in with myself. Am I valuing myself, my time, and my goals appropriately? If I hadn't asked myself this question, I don't know. I might not be here with this business with you today because this is what it comes down to. You are a good person. You do have your priorities straight. You just gotta trust yourself versus needing that false validation from others, even if it's people you love and trust. Ultimately, this is the best way I found to be successful and kind. So you can have the business and life you want while staying true to your values. I really hope you found this helpful, especially if you were struggling to balance being kind with maintaining strong boundaries and valuing yourself. If you did, I would love to hear your biggest takeaway. Let me know in the comments.